Did you know that Chinese emperors had more than one name throughout their lives? Yes, it was quite common for Chinese emperors to have multiple names. This is because while their parents gave them a name at birth, they did not necessarily use it throughout their lives. Sometimes, parents also bestowed a personal name at a young age. In addition to these, emperors also had regional, temple, and era names. The emperor could have used any of these different names based on the context. Usually, the use of an emperor's full name was forbidden throughout his domain, even posthumously. The full names were generally reserved for historical records. And what a history this land has! China has ebbed and flowed through the centuries, from turmoil to unification and much more. But today, we look at some dark epochs of this ancient land. These dark epochs may or may not have been marked by natural catastrophes, but they were undoubtedly marked by the political, economic, and managerial errors of its leadership. Here are the 10 most terrible Chinese emperors. Shia Jie, 1728 to 1675 BCE, approximately. Historians still debate whether or not the tale of the first dynasty in Chinese history, Shia, has any historical significance. The lack of archaeological evidence and written records does not help matters. Still, the final emperor of this mythic dynasty catches the eye. Despite the historical ambiguity of the dynasty, the tale of its final emperor, dated somewhere between the 18th and 17th century BCE, still terrifies the Chinese. Xia Jie, as he would have been known, was a man with little taste for his subordinates' defiance. He is known to have ridden his advisors like horses. Another story recalls him creating a massive lake filled to the brim with naked men and women. Due to acts like these, the underlying kingdoms began aligning themselves with the rival kingdom of Shang, which later fought and defeated the Jia dynasty. However, the question of historical truth comes up repeatedly, mainly because the Shang dynasty did not leave any written documents about the Jia dynasty either. It is quite possible that the Zhu dynasty, whose records told the tale several centuries later, exaggerated the events to justify their political ambitions. Some motifs from the fable of Jia would also show up in the stories of Emperor Di Jin, who was another ruthless tyrant in the 11th century BCE. Qin Shi Huang, 259-210 BCE Ying Zheng, the founder of the Qin dynasty, is remembered for uniting China for the first time. The Qin dynasty has even lent its name to the modern country of China. However, the impact of the Qin dynasty on modern China goes far beyond just the name. Ying Zheng, or Qin Shi Huang, was the first emperor of a unified China, but the policies he exercised to achieve this unification are controversial. At the time, China was a fragmented land. To bring them together, Qi Huang felt the need to promote harmony, but the way he chose to promote it was quite unharmonious. He burned thousands of books and scholarly works. He slaughtered any detractors and believed that true harmony could only come by a marriage of cultural roots. As long as factions held unique cultures and traditions different from their peers, the land could not be unified. To achieve this, he resorted to burning literature. After all, literature reflects and expresses a society's individuality. Even the Dutch historian E. M. Gombrich, whose A Little History of the World charts the history of Europe and the Middle East through the ages, could not ignore the book-burning practice of Shi Huangdi and had to dedicate a small chapter of his book to it. One can almost think of this momentous event of world history as the Chinese equivalent of the burning of the Library of Alexandria. After his quest to seek everlasting life came to no avail, Shi Huang died by ingesting mercury tablets. Han Ling Di, 156-189 Liu Hong, his personal name, the 12th emperor of the Eastern Han Dynasty, is remembered for his overindulgence in material desires. He was known for his penchant for women and in this vein, he would often ignore the crucial matters of state. His lavish lifestyle and unawareness of the political landscape bore terrible consequences for the entire Chinese land. Tribal chiefs, warlords, and other political factions started to oppose him after he levied heavy taxes on peasants. Meanwhile, his court officers were involved in corruption. His nonchalant attitude towards his people severely hurt the credibility of the Eastern Han Dynasty. His rule was marked by a decline in the dynasty's power and helped lead to the Three Kingdoms era. The consequent civil wars and conflicts were among the most lethal wars in Asian history, with death counts reaching approximately 40 million. 
Sun Hao, 242 to 284. Sun Hao was the last emperor of Eastern Wu during the turbulent Three Kingdoms period. His rule started in a relatively hopeful fashion, but soon turned into a nightmare. In the beginning, he reduced taxes, made some critical management decisions regarding the high-level officials, and let several concubines go. But like other Chinese rulers, he could not avoid falling into the trap of wine and women. Like the old proverb says, first the man takes the drink, then the drink takes the man. He became obsessed with women and kept a close eye on the beautiful girls in aristocratic families. He decreed that no daughter of a major official can be married without being presented to him first. Once offered, he would decide whether he wanted the woman as a concubine or not before allowing the marriage to go through. As his indulgence in these follies increased, he grew distrustful of the people around him, so he sent many faithful advisors to their deaths. This paranoia further exhibited itself in his attitude towards disagreements. He killed anyone who dared to disagree with him, and it was not a swift death. He tortured people by gouging their eyes and peeling their flesh. This spree of absurdity led to the fall of Eastern Wu. The Jin Dynasty destroyed Eastern Wu in 280 to end the Three Kingdoms period. Liu Zi, 449 to 466. Liu Zi, the sixth emperor in the Liu Song Dynasty, had a short but violent reign. His perverted sexual extravaganzas meant that he cared little for anything interfering with his lifestyle. Highly incompetent, the ruler is remembered for having many royal family members and high-ranking officials killed. He assumed control in 464 at the age of 15 and was assassinated a year later by his uncle. Liu Zi either murdered or imprisoned almost every member of his family. His Caligula-like sexual appetite meant that incest and other vices were not beyond him. These bouts of debauchery often put him at odds with other family members, whom he would end up eliminating. Emperor Wen Zhang of Northern Qi, 526 to 559. During the Southern and Northern dynasties between the 5th and 6th centuries, Wen Zhang of Gao Yang was the first emperor of Northern Qi. In his youth, he was revered for his insight into military matters. Not only that, he tried his best to curb corruption and strengthen the political and economic institutions. Nevertheless, this only lasted so long. Over the years, time ate away at him, and he kept falling into arrogance and depravity. Wine and women, his two indulgences, got the better of him. Homicidal in his drunken state, he sent many people to their deaths when inebriated. He died in his early 30s due to alcohol-related diseases. Sui Yangdi 569 to 618. Historians generally regard the second emperor of the Xu dynasty, Xu Yangdi or Yang Guang, as the worst emperor in Chinese history. His fondness for large-scale projects and love for land expansion may have seemed like a good idea, but ended up causing the death of millions of people. However, all those things came after he murdered his father to usurp the throne. After coming into power, he started his spree of construction projects. The most notable of these projects was the reconstruction of the Great Wall of China, which resulted in the deaths of approximately 6 million workers. Self-indulgent banquets and festivities marked his almost 14-year reign in the 6th century. His habit of overspending quickly emptied the treasury of the Xu dynasty. His expansionist ambitions incurred significant costs too. His foray into modern-day Vietnam was met with some success, but left his soldiers riddled with malaria and other diseases. Similarly, his incursion into the Korean kingdom of Goguryeo was so poorly managed that around 700,000 people lost their lives to famine and war. Due to his ineptitude, resistance grew against him, and he was finally strangled to death by his general in a coup. With his death, the Su dynasty was gone, and the Tang dynasty took over the reins. Wu Zetian, 624 to 705. The first female Chinese monarch, Wu Zetian, remains quite a controversial figure. She was an imperial concubine, but she was able to make her way to the top by wading her way through political intrigue. She had an affair with the emperor's son to ascend the ranks. Not only that, but she also framed the wife of the subsequent emperor for murder. Many believe that Wu Zetian committed filicide for the sake of power. After the emperor's death, her son took the throne, but things were just getting started for Wu. After deposing and exiling her son for disobedience, she laid the foundations for the Zhou dynasty. While in power, 
she had many members of the aristocratic families and scholars executed, assassinated, enslaved, or exiled. Although she wielded her power strictly within the upper echelon of society, the commoners cherished her as a monarch. The economy was stable, and people from the lower ranks started making their way to the top, an unprecedented notion. Song Hui Zong, 1082-1135 Zhao Zhi, or Hui Zong of Song, was a connoisseur of great art and an esthete. However, when it came to ruling the people, he was incredibly inept. The eighth emperor of the Song dynasty inherited his empire in the 12th century, when northern Song was already frail. Historians lament his rule for its courtly decadence and his youthful hobbies. While he was a lover of music and the arts, the emperor was also very fond of courtesans and would often leave to visit them, ignoring the matters of the state. He entrusted stately affairs to six manipulating advisors who were guided by their interests and schemes. All this dallying around finally caught up to him in the end. The Jin dynasty in the north, led by the Jerkins, brought his capital to its knees. He abdicated the throne and passed the duties on to his son. Both father and son were captured and placed under house arrest, and nine years of humiliating imprisonment followed. Broken in the face of torture, Hui Zong fell to his death. Zhu Yuxiao, 1605-1627 The 16th emperor of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Yuxiao, the Tangqi emperor, took over the throne at the age of 15. He faced acute learning disabilities and could not understand the workings of the court. Since he was not well versed in anything besides carpentering, he handed these affairs to a eunuch. The eunuch, Wei Zhongzhen, became increasingly powerful and installed his associates in the positions of power. Wei exploited the dynasty and the people for his personal gains, giving rise to dissent and social conflicts. All this commotion weakened the Ming dynasty considerably. The later Jin and southern Ming dynasties would fall in the coming centuries. The dynastic tradition concluded itself with the end of the Qing dynasty. We hope you enjoyed this video on the top 10 most terrible Chinese emperors. If you did, please check out our book, History of China, a captivating guide to Chinese history, including events such as the first emperor of China, the Mongol conquests of Genghis Khan, the Opium Wars, and the Cultural Revolution. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, be sure to grab your free mythology bundle while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.